if you're using DaVinci Resolve and your project gets really complicated with a lot of elements happening all at once, today I want to talk to you about using compound clips. In this example here, what I've got is some footage of a classic car and I want to use a call out on top of it to point out some of the things on the dashboard. Well, to do that, I might end up using lots of different tracks for the lines and the text and some of the pop out color behind the text. That results in me having a lot of different tracks on my timeline. If you can see here, the lowest track is just that circular dot that pops up. The next track above that is the line that actually scoops down and points towards the color band that pops out. And on top of that, I've got some text that layers on top of that to say original AM radio. Now, these are a lot of tracks that are built together to work to create an overall effect. But as you can see, they're still all separate tracks doing different things to create one overlay or one call out that I want to use in this particular video. If you look at it with the footage that I actually want to apply it to, those layers, they aren't in the right place. They're actually pointing up towards the top of the dashboard. In this footage, I want to take all of those elements and move them down so that the dot starts on the radio and actually is down in that black area below the dashboard in the footage. Well, one easy thing I can do is to select all of those elements in my timeline, all the things that make up that call out. Then if I right click anywhere on top of them and choose new compound clip, I can create a compound clip that puts them all together. Now, by default, it's going to stick this compound clip in the media pool wherever I currently am or whatever folder I currently have selected. So one thing I would tell you before you create this clip is to go up to the media pool, click on master and actually create a folder that will put this compound clip into it. You can call that whatever you want. In this case, I'll just click on new bin and I'm going to call it the call outs because that's what I've created here. The call outs that are going to be overlaid on top of this pointing to things on this dashboard. Once I've done that, I select the folder, make sure I have all of these elements highlighted, right click and choose new compound clip. Now I can name this particular call out clip, whatever I want. Why don't I call this the uh, the original radio? Because that's exactly what this callout is designed to do, point at the radio. You'll now see that all of those elements collapsed into one single asset in your timeline. And if you look up in the media pool under that callouts folder that we created, there it is. It's right there, already put together. Now, if I play this footage through, you'll see that callout is right there, but it's all condensed into one particular clip on your timeline. Now, this entire call out here is actually not something I built. It's actually something I got from today's sponsor, Storyblocks. Storyblocks is an affordable asset house where you can get things like B-roll, music, sound effects, and images that you can use royalty free in your next YouTube video. And Storyblocks just added an entire section of templates specifically for DaVinci Resolve that include animated titles, transition, motion graphics, and more. Now I've been using Storyblocks for years before they ever became a sponsor because I actually really like the quality of the product they offer. I also like the fact that for one affordable price, you can get access to as many assets as you need. There are no download limits about how many videos that you can use at any given time period, how many images you can use, or how many pieces of music or sound effects that you can get from Storyblocks. Storyblocks has really made it simple. Once you sign up for an account, the sky's the limit. You can get to work using as many of the high quality assets that Storyblocks has there ready for creators just like you. Everything that I'm using here in this video today, I got from Storyblocks. I'll leave a link down below if you want to go check out Storyblocks for yourself today. Like I said, this thing isn't located where I want it to be. The dot, the line, the block of color, and the text saying original AM radio, they're all up too high. But now that I've combined them into a compound clip, I can just select that in my timeline, go up to the lower left underneath my preview window and click on transform. And you'll see that a transform window appears up in the preview window for that element that's all combined together. Now, all I need to do is take my mouse, left click, and I can move all of those things together at once instead of doing it individually. I can even shrink or zoom or spin, rotate, do whatever I want to those things all at once because I put them into a compound clip. I'm just left clicking on the upper right dot in the corner that allows me to increase or decrease the entire size of this element. But once I get this to where I want it, let's say that I want it to be about this size and let's say right around the middle of that radio, somewhere 
let's say there. Now I've relocated all the things that make out that original AM radio call out without having to do a lot of little individual moves in each track by themselves. Now, as this track plays, you'll see this thing will now pop out and it will stay down in that corner, everything all aligned together. But one of the things I'm noticing here is the call out is staying in place and the camera pan is moving across that dashboard of this car. So here's another cool thing that making this into a compound clip can help us with. Let me go back to the beginning where this call out first shows up on screen. You see right about there is where the dot pops out and it seems to be sort of located right in the middle at the left hand side of the AM dial. Let's leave the playhead there. Let's select that compound clip and in the upper right under the video tab of the inspector, I'm going to click on the transform option and add a keyframe right there. We've talked about this before. If you get onto the asset in your timeline and click on the keyframe option, you will now see that it has dropped a keyframe right at that spot. Now, if I move the playhead forward in the timeline and go towards the end of this section, now that dot is more towards the upper right of the display instead of being back towards the middle left where I had it originally. Because this is now a compound clip, all I need to do is leave the playhead there, grab this entire compound clip up in the preview window by left clicking and holding and moving that entire compound clip and that dot back to where it was at the beginning of this footage. DaVinci Resolve automatically adds another keyframe there to let the project know at this point, the compound clip needs to be located there. And because we're using keyframes, DaVinci Resolve fills in all the information in between. So when I play this clip back, you'll see that this will pop up and it will move with that camera pan, keeping that dot in place as the camera moves and tracking along with it. Now, once I've got this all done, I can actually turn off the transform option so you don't have to see that window anymore just by clicking on that in the lower left under your preview window. And now that frame will disappear and you'll see this play out exactly as we want it to. I can even save this compound clip with the keyframing now if I wanted to by right clicking, choosing new compound clip, and then naming it original radio with keyframing. And you'll now see that that's created up in that callouts folder. Now, at any point, if you wanted to separate that compound clip that you made to break it back down to its elements, you could actually select it in your timeline, right click on it, and choose decompose in place, and then go back to using clips only and it would actually revert it right back to where you started with all the original pieces. Keep in mind, it doesn't hang on to any of the things that we added when it was a compound clip like that keyframing because we've reverted it back to the original pieces that made the compound clip up before it was turned into that compound clip. Now, what's really cool here is if for any reason I were to delete this or remove that from the timeline, I haven't lost any of those elements. I can actually go right up to that callouts folder, grab that entire compound clip, bring it back down, and it will exist right here again with all of the elements that made it up in place, and I can drop it back in my timeline. This can be really useful for things that you're going to be using over and over again in different projects like an intro or maybe a midsection, or maybe there's a call to action that happens in your videos. You can create these compound clips that you can come back to afterwards. Now, one of the problems that DaVinci Resolve has right now is it doesn't allow you to put compound clips into places like your power bins or export them and save them somewhere. That can be a real pain in the butt. But as always, there's always a workaround to do things in DaVinci Resolve until the time that maybe they allow us to export and save these separately externally somewhere. Here's an easy way to do that. One thing that DaVinci Resolve does allow you to do is open up more than one project at a time. What you want to do is when you open up the project manager, right click anywhere in the gray area and make sure you have dynamic project switching enabled. If you do, anytime you're in a new project like I am now, all you need to do is go up to the file menu, scroll down, open up project manager, and then find the project where you had built your callout titles. Click on that and it will open up that project. So here's those callout titles that we like so much. If I were to right click on that and choose copy, and in the drop down menu, you'll see that you can switch to your new project. Switch back over. And once you've built a timeline, you have to have a timeline built first, right click in your timeline. 
you can just click paste and it will drop that asset from the other project into your new project. Simple. If you want to learn more about how to make cool videos, put them onto YouTube and grow a YouTube channel, look on the video that I have on screen now or the ones that I'll link down below. Peace.